What's up, everyone? It's Tuesday, August 11th. Oh, my God. Did you see that guest list, Michael James Scott? I saw the guest list. I am so excited. (laughs) What's going on, Paul? We are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And And I'm I'm Michael James Scott. I'm Michael James Scott. Hi, Michael. How are you? I missed I'm you last excited. week. I'm excited. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. Uh, no, I'm, I'm excited too. Uh, we I are know joined. I missed you. Yeah. Did you miss me? Yeah. We're joined as always by Caitlin oh. Moynihan. Hi, Caitlin. Oh. I know Caitlin's excited too. These panels are the highlights of, of our week. And so we, we were missing it last week, but you yes. made up for it this week with oh. the guest list. We had to go who, big. We had to go who's big. Who's here? Can you guys please tell me who's here? Michael, I you mean, have well, I mean, we are going, we're giving you Derek Baskins, we are giving you Joshua Henry, and we are giving you Leslie Odom Jr., y'all. Come yes. on. The leading men are in the yes. house. Yes, yes. I call it the leading black. How about that? Just like. Sure, sure. <laughs> leading black. Like, just like amazing Come leading on. black men. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you uh, lead another amazing conversation. But first, let's do today's news. So, the very talented Andrew Barth Feldman, who, of course, was in Dear Evan Hansen. He's the, the real teen, Evan Hansen. He's a right. very creative guy, Michael. Do you know how creative he is? I mean, he has all kinds of projects going on. He's a full-on and, entrepreneur. I mean, it is, he, it's amazing. <laughs> and, he's, and he's waiting to go to Harvard. Uh, I mean, oh it's just crazy. God. Are you yeah, serious? But, yeah, it's a real thing. He's a, yeah, he's just waiting. Uh, anyway, uh, he's doing this Broadway Who Done It thing. He was here on Live at Five talking about it. He did the first one; it was amazing, and now he has his second one. It's called Escape from Camp Erie. It's happening August thirtieth. Listen to this cast of Broadway favorites. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what they play. Rob McClure is the camp director. Uh, oh. Leslie Margarita is the camp owner. Saleya Pfeiffer is the instructor. It all takes place at a camp, obviously. Sky Lakota Lynch is the counselor. Gabrielle Carrera is the counselor. Jason Tam is an investor. Uh, and Andrew Barth Feldman is the investor's son. I'm sure that's drama. Uh, <laughs> Al Fonello the lunch master. Celia Rose Gooden, who was, been, who was here recently, uh, is CIT. What's CIT? What does that stand for? Is that like counselor, counselor in training? training? Counselor in training. Okay, I was a that CIT at the YMCA. Were you really? Yes, I was. YMCA. Oh I, was a, I was an LIT, a leader in training. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, and now you're leading. Uh, and Will Rowland is the groundskeeper. So this is a really fun thing. Everyone's going to go on on the 30th, and you follow them into rooms. It's this, it's this crazy, amazing thing. And everyone, check that out. It's the latest Broadway Who Done It. I can't wait. Yes, that's really exciting. Yes, y'all. Now get this. Steve Martin and Martin Short set for only murders in the building. Yes, comedy legend Steve Martin. All (laughs) murders. It's all murders. We're just dealing with murders now. That's what we do. (laughs) It's crazy. Y'all listen to this. So comedy legend Steve Martin and Martin Short will star and executive produce a new Hulu series, comedy series titled only murders in the building. The show is produced by This Is Us creator Dan Vogelman and was created and written by Martin and John Hoffman. It revolves around three strangers who share an obsession with true crime who suddenly find themselves wrapped up in one. Tony nominated Martin and Tony winner Short will lead the show alongside actress and recording artist Selena Gomez. Well, all right, come on now. More info to come. That sounds like, I mean... You know, you have the two of them together. Come on now. I, anytime you say true crime, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> one more thing that's not about murder, but about a really good cause. There will be a virtual reading to benefit the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund happening August 12th. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. And this is uh, Lynn Nottage's, uh play, Crumbs from the Table of Joy. It's a fantastic mm. play. She, of course, is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. And it's reuniting the cast who did it in Martha's Vineyard in 2016? Martha Vineyard's Playhouse did it, and Adrian D. Williams is directing. So that's that's a great cause that everyone can support tomorrow. Yes. Now we're going to get to your amazing panel, but as you know, we like to do this little a little Broadway history moment. So here is today in Broadway. 
Now, I'm going to kick off this today in Broadway with a video clip because this is one of my favorite Broadway themed videos of all time, and it will explain what today's Today in Broadway is. Yeah, yes, you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna love You're <laughs> going to love it. Ladies and gentlemen, on Broadway, the news is Dreamgirls, Michael Bennett's smash hit musical. The delectable, the defiant dreamer. Move, move, move right out of my life. I'm not singing behind anybody. I've been around, working my way to whoever it's how. We're your Dreamgirls, boys, we need to have. at the Imperial Theater. No other show comes close. Uh, can we take a minute to just breathe? Now, have you seen that before? That, I have not seen that before. That was the original Sereno Coin commercial for Dreamgirls. It rocked my childhood because that shot of Effie, when they <laughs> swoop over, when, you know, they swoop over her and she sees yes. them making out. I mean, that, okay. The I, reason I, now, now I could play that video every day because it's one of my favorite things in the world. But the oh reason why gosh. I'm playing it today is because 35 years ago today, the original production of Dreamgirls ended its historic almost four year run at the Imperial Theater where Derek Baskin was recently slaying over at yes. AG Crowd and will once again. And uh, I just, we have to honor that, right? I mean, we have to honor the amazing milestones of black theater on Broadway in the past, and we have to remember. And so, uh, like 35 years, next year will be the 40th anniversary of the original Dreamgirls opening. I wanna shout out those amazing original stars, if you don't mind. Oh, Shirley please. Brown, Brad Devine, Deborah Burrell, Ben Harney, Clevon Derricks, Oba Babatunde, and this little girl named Jennifer Holliday, who of course, <laughs> Broke everyone's hearts, won a Tony. I mean, a, a lot of them won Tonys. Uh, it was, you know, Tom Ian, uh, Michael Bennett, Henry Krieger created it. I'm trying to, it, over wow. 1,500 performances, I'm trying to figure out if you're more a Cece or a James Thunder Early, Michael James <laughs> Scott. Well, you know, I've fallen kind of in the in the middle of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, the I past. mean, well, and with today's, with today's, cast in your panel i we know do an amazing revival of dream girls we I mean, absolutely could do a revival we got the dream we got the dream boys they're ready to go i uh, mean <laughs> yeah so it. that's it that that's that's my i had to get that out because i just love that show and those performers so much and obviously iconic so that wow. was today in Broadway. Thank you, Paul, for sharing that. That was You're everything. Welcome. That got me excited, even more excited. <laughs> Our panel today. That's Fantastic. everything. <laughs> OK. All On right. that note, I think I'm out. OK, all right. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. That was pretty incredible. That's pretty epic. Um, also, what's epic is the panel that we have today. Y'all, welcome back to another Live at Five um, panel discussions with posted by me, Michael James Scott. Uh, and today, I am so excited to get into it and chat and have discussion and talk it up with three powerhouses. Ladies and gentlemen, the Broadway.com audience, are y'all ready for this? Please welcome, joining us today are some of Broadway's biggest, amazing leading men. 
Tony winner Leslie Odom Jr. and Tony nominees Joshua Henry and Derek Baskin. Y'all, what's going on, boys? What's happening? <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see y'all. How y'all doing? Y'all look good. Great. Doing good, yes. man. Doing good. Leslie and uh, and Josh, how are the how are the how are the kids? <laughs> um, <I'm>, baby, <laughs> Samson's incredible. He's two and a half now talking oh. we got him a little toy mic oh he's all about it oh a little too much i'm like calm down <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun he's great oh that's yeah. amazing all things considered all right there's there's tough there's tough days you know she misses her friends i mean like you know like a three-year-old is trying to be about three-year-old business like she wants to yes, be running yes. she wants to be jumping she like she's like engaged with me like a three-year-old would so it's mm -hmm. it's hard but oh. um but it, there's more good days than bad days so yeah 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 well y'all look good derek you look good i see you Danny. Hey, i watched my face this morning y'all <laughs> 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 they don't always happen <laughs> well listen but that, not they all, that don't always happen <laughs> well listen i want to brag on y'all a little bit um all of my panel guests that come i gotta i mean obviously our audience know who you three men are but i would like to just get it out in the open again and just let you know what we're working with today people y'all we have derek baskins he earned his first tony, tony nomination in 2019 for starring as otis williams in ain't too proud which also guard there it is also garnered him a t grammy award nomination his other broadway credits include memphis the little mermaid and 25th annual putnam's county spelling bee uh um, i mean you know come on ooh, you're taking look me at back. him look at him with the dreads yes <laughs> <laughs> I loved you in that show. I loved you in that show, Derek. He was so good in that show, right? Yeah. So good. Incredible. We have Joshua Henry, y'all. He was most recently seen in Ross Golan's The Wrong Man off Broadway, which earned him Lucy Lotel, Drama Desk, and Other Critic Circle Award nominations. He has three Tony Award nominations for, let me say that again, three Tony okay. Award nominations for his turns in Carousel, Violet, and the Scots World Boys. His other mm -hmm. Broadway credits include In the Heights, Shuffle Along, or The Making of the Musical Sensation of 1921 and all that followed, Porgy and Bess, American Idiot, and more. I mean, come on now. And then, yes. Oh, yes. There it is. Oh, Henry was, that. he was seen as Aaron Burr in the national touring productions of Hamilton and is set to play Roger in the upcoming Tick, Tick, Boom film. Yes. All right. And last but certainly not least, y'all, is Mr. Leslie Odom Jr. He is known for winning a Tony Award for originating the role of Aaron Burr. There he is. Come on in the room where it happens. In <laughs> Hamilton, which also earned him a Grammy Award. He was previously, ah, oh, that picture every time picture, gets me. So it, just make, it just makes me so happy every time. Amazing. He was previously seen on Broadway in Leap of Faith and Rent. His Leap screen credits faith. include, yes, Leap of Faith. Come on, we're going back <laughs> to Leap of Faith. Huh. <laughs> His when screen credits so. include, <laughs> yes. <laughs> His screen credits include Smash and Murder on the Orient Express and Harriet. Recently, he received his first Emmy nomination for Outstanding Character Voice Over Performance for oh. Central Park, yo! Oh. Yes, okay. there he is. Oldham Jr. has three studio yeah. albums, including the recently released Mr. Come on, everybody! <laughs> it's nice to have y'all. That is what we're working with, and so let's get in it. So, you guys, I just wanted to sort of start off with just sort of like a, a a pretty it's a pretty broad question but the three of, from the three of you like when each of you started out in your careers right how did you manage this you know very sort of like black man box <laughs> that so many men of color face right away it's just i'm just, i'm just curious from the three of you how did how did how did you start that out and just sort of managing that for yourselves um why don't we go go for it josh <laughs> I'll jump in. I, I remember getting to New York and I remember the first Broadway show I saw was Wicked. Mm. And at that time, um, Tay Diggs was playing Fierro. Ah. Um, but in my book, I had, you know, Run and Tell That from Hairspray and I had Old Man River, you know, some just black man essentials. Yes. Um, but then I saw that and I was like, that uh, in conjunction with what I knew about Michael McElroy, I was like, you know what? I don't know if I have to stick to this script. And it, and it, it was a very freeing moment for me to then realize what, what, what do I actually want to do? 
Mm. What, what are the roles I actually want to portray? I want to sing rock. I want to sing opera. I want to sing pop. I want to sing it all. Mm -hmm. So that memory in 2003 of seeing Tay Diggs in Wicked was a big moment for me because I was like, you know what? I, I think I've, I've, I've been putting a, my teachers from conservatory and a little bit myself put limits on what I, on what was actually possible. So it was right. nice to have that broken early on in my New York days. Mm. Oh, uh, I guess I feel like I'm a little bit opposite because I came into the business not knowing what the business was and not at all having any training in it. So I didn't know. Weren't you a bio major? Like, did you have a bio yeah, major? Yeah. Yes, yes. Science geek, but like still science geek. But like, <laughs> um, I didn't know there were rules. I didn't know there were boxes at first, right? And so mm -hmm. when I came into the business, just very naive, um, people were trying to say, well, you should probably go into this box or you should probably. And I was like, nah, I actually just don't, I don't want to. So for me, it was kind of a struggle to um, kind of just stay true to myself because hmm. there was just so many opportunities to say, there's this box for you black guys. You really should go in this box. And I was just like, I just feel like I don't want you to put me there. And mm -hmm. I just stuck to my guns, which meant, which meant that I didn't go out for certain roles and and uh, just waited for roles that kind of like kind of just either spoke to me or that I just really liked. Um, so but it was a struggle at first just trying to figure out, like, why do I have to go? Like, why do I have to do that? I don't have right. to. Great. Then I'm not going to. So it was just, just kind of just a learning process for me. Yeah. Yeah. I hear yeah, that. Leslie, what about for you? Yeah, yeah, the question was, you know, how how did we figure out how to fit into those boxes and, you know, not well. I, I certainly hmm. didn't fit into it very well. You know, I didn't I didn't work a ton. You know, they're all, I've only, I've only done three Broadway shows and they and they they had a not only three, but I mean they were very spaced out. You know, I did rent when I was uh 17 and I didn't the next the next Broadway show wasn't until Leap of Faith. So and it wasn't for lack of trying. Um, and then Leap of Faith, you know, after Leap of Faith is Hamilton. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I I wasn't doing such a great job of of doing what uh, what was expected or required, you know, of us. I wasn't um, I, I wasn't very good at it. I did have Josh knows this. Uh, me and Josh met with with Billy though, Billy mm. Porter, who um, who at that time you know, was really at probably his, the lowest point in his life, or one of the lowest. And what he did at that time, um, instead of moping and feeling sorry for himself and, you know, closing the blinds and hiding away, he started creating things and he created things for me. He created things for Josh. Is that it the Sondheim? The Sondheim, uh, yes. The Sondheim thing and a, and a couple other things that, that initially he was, he was, developing for himself right and you know you know how you cherry pick the good the good material for yourself right you're writing something juicy for yourself and then when he decided that he didn't want to star in it anymore um he gave that part to me and so i mm -hmm. i was the beneficiary of you know of all the of, of all the best things that billy tried to give himself he gave to me and he gave me his counsel and his and his and he he was my mentor and my teacher and stuff and so billy helped me um at least there was just there was somebody that was trying to make room for me in the space as i was and so mm -hmm. um and i and between that and the work that i was able to do in television because i was doing mostly tv at that time i was you know my little guest spots on csi miami and yeah Great anatomy and gilmore girls you know that that was really how i was feeding myself and making a living. And the Broadway thing just became sort of a, maybe one day, you know, maybe there'll be a space for me created there, but I didn't fit in well with the hmm. status quo. Yeah, yeah. So then, so with that then, I this is sort of kind of goes into the thing. So, so how, you know, obviously the challenges as a leading black man, I mean, obviously a leading man period, but now we're throwing we're leading black men into the equation um, and specifically like setting boundaries and writing that fine line of what is so quickly, quickly called like the angry black man, right? You know, there's, there's this interesting sort of thing that happens when we set boundaries or, or um, uh, that I feel very quickly sort of turn into that narrative, which is very interesting. And, 
and so you obviously have to fight, ride that line and 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 setting boundaries and all those things and so navigating that journey in your career especially as you were coming up in it was that tricky for you did did, did that not even phase you was that something that you really looked at other others you know who were around you to sort of, sort of give you that advice how would you how did you manage that narrative because that's also a whole other um, yeah. thing that we have to deal with yeah uh, yeah. I'll say that I feel that uh, whenever like I approach work, I want to make sure that I always tell the truth. Hmm. And so if I'm going to tell the truth, then I'm not going to play, um, oh, you just want me to be angry here, right? I, I need to know the why behind it. I need to know, <laughs> I, I just have to make sure that I am honoring my character's layers. And a lot of times, sometimes when you're working with uh, creatives who don't necessarily come from your background, um, you will, uh, they will project, well, this is what your anger should look like. But like, mm -hmm. as a black man, I, I know what my anger looks like. <laughs> so like I know what that is. And, um, and, and it always, and it also doesn't look the same each time that I'm angry. And so uh, I just have to make sure that whatever that moment is, if there is an, uh, an archetype that needs to be played at that moment, that I tell the truth in it and that I don't necessarily um, play to what you think anger should be or what you think whatever, uh, uh, whatever the, the mood or the color is, I need, I need to make sure that I always tell the truth. And so to do that, I love, what I love what you're saying. Sorry, brother. I'll, yeah, no, I'll, no, 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 go ahead, man. I love what you're saying because I, 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 I you talked about telling the truth, right? Yeah. And um, you know, I believe that the the issues or the things that we're working on in our work, we're also working on those things in our life, sure. in our lives, and the things that we're working on in our lives, we work on in our work. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like vulnerability or courage or um, ferocity, you know, and any of those things, you know, if you want to bring these things to your work, yeah. bring them to your life, yeah. right? You want to be more honest and more vulnerable in your work, be more honest and vulnerable in your life and vice versa. Sure. You know, it's like um, falling in love or having children or, you know, these things affect your work so profoundly because yeah. They affect your life so profoundly. So I'll say, you know, like working on Hamilton, um, I've never been more honest in my work. Hmm. And so I had no choice but to be more honest in my life. And I was showing up, I was showing up in my relationships, in my friendships, in my working relationships, and I was being more honest. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. This is what I feel I deserve. I'm saying it to you in love. Yeah. You no, know, because that's what I was doing on stage. That's what I was trying to do on stage every single night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it affected my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting yeah. talking about that on stage and real life yeah. connection. And uh, to your to your question, Michael, about, you know, not being a stereotype. I, I, when I did Carousel on Broadway, I had to uh, I face all of that at one moment, yeah, right. you know, there were talks of, what, are you gonna be the angry yeah. black man right now? Yep. You mean when you and played Billy Bigelow, you know, like the, <laughs> one of the yeah. most iconic musical yeah. theater roles, for, I mean, come on. Sure, and it's something that I had to really, you know, and I, I, I had about a year to really think about that, like before before I actually performed it. Um, yeah. And, you know, that, that was a really hard thing for me to wrestle with, but what I focused on, um, was redemption. You know, there's a there's a stereotype mm. of folks not, you know, of black men being angry. Yeah. But what we don't see much is second chances. You know, mm. showing up, you know, what what do we do when we get a second chance to show up for our family? Um, even if it's in a, a mystical way, like not a mystical way, but a spiritual way as it's portrayed in, in Carousel. And that spiritual aspect of trying to write something spiritually um really resonated with me and it just so happened at that time that I Catherine my wife and I were having a child our first child so to your point Leslie it was like there was <laughs> I I had to really be honest with who I was at that moment yeah. singing a song like soliloquy which talks about what's my child going to be like what am I going to put into them 
Yeah. What's going to be different now? You know, they're questions that I were asking myself in real life. So um, I think it's about really being intentional with what you want to portray. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah, really the yeah. biggest thing. I love that. Yeah. I love this honesty thing that you all are talking about because it's. A, I feel like it's such a important piece of the puzzle. I mean, you all have touched on this thing and sort of connecting it, how it's interesting, how it has gone into your life because people have asked, you know, they've asked like, you know, how do you, for me, it was like, how do you play the genie and like, you know, sort of stay up this thing. And I had this aha moment. And now as we're talking about it, it was this aha moment of going back to this sort of like, young little Michael James Scott who wanted to just sing and dance and didn't really care about anything, right? It's so getting back to the sort of his authentic self. And it's amazing what happens once once I got rid of that noise and what happened to my individual relationships in life. Like it's incredible the authenticity that happens when you're able to do that. And then the black man thing just goes out the window because you're just being you. Do you know what I mean? So it's like this interesting thing. Um, and I love that you all are speaking about it being truth. And it's 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 a uh, it's not about um, it's not sort of about this stereotype, but there is an actual uh, truth to that. So it's thank not about all for saying filling that. anyone else's expectation. Right. Like, exactly. That's yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. Um, so Leslie, there was this awesome interview you did with M MSNBC's The Beat with Ari. Um, it was a it was a great, great interview. And it was it, there was you, you had mentioned you talked about like how we're in such a different time and you know you welcomed it because and that there was this like real sweet spot, right, for Hollywood to see black stories about like civil war, civil civil rights, or like if all the projects about black people could, you said, which is hilarious, you said like if all the projects about black people could be from about 1957 to like 1969, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, or even earlier during slavery right. times. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. That like, they'd be like, oh, perfect. And as you said, I mean, obviously there's validity for all of those projects, yeah. but you would love to also be a part of contemporary stories about black life now. Yeah. So I'm I am curious for you, what do you do you feel like Broadway is similar um, mm. or or different from that? What what do you think about that specifically within our Broadway community? Mm, good question. I mean, you know, Broadway is you know, we're we're always trying to imagine and reimagine ourselves and the possibilities for what we can be. I mean, I certainly think that there's, you know, there's um, the, the, the M Michael, the living Jackson, and there's, you know, there are, um, who else could I say? Obviously, obviously Jeremy, you know, O'Harris, you know what I mean? So there, there, there are people that are, you know, um, the works are polarizing, but there are people that are out there, you know, definitely trying to tell stories. You know, Michael is trying to tell a very, very specific story about a black life very right now. So I yeah. know people out there doing it. Um, yeah, it's just the, the nature, the nature of the theater, you know, just how long it takes. It's it's hard to stay contemporary because of how long it takes. Mm, right, and, right. And it, and it is so expensive. It is so, you know, people end up getting snatched up by TV. They end up getting, you know, snatched up by just regular jobs and regular life because the because the work takes so long mm -hmm. and we've made it so expensive to produce this work. So it is a challenge, but I know that there's talented people out there that have cracked it, uh, um, are in the process of cracking it, and will continue to crack it. Don't y'all think? I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, but it's that timing thing because it just takes so oh, long. Oh, so long. And it's, right. it's almost like you have to write a little bit ahead of your time so that when it gets there, you'll be current. You know what I mean? It's 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 really interesting. But I, I do have faith in uh, uh, the current writers, the current creatives who are writing uh, for us. Um, I definitely have faith that those stories will be told. Yeah, yeah. and and I think some of you see, like you mentioned, to Jeremy O'Harris's, and uh, th there are others. I think the work. What's really important to me right now is how we cultivate that. Mm -hmm. You know, what? How are we building to really? Um, what structure are we are we building as the people who are in this now and have reached some level of note? Um, mm -hmm. to build infrastructure for the writers that are coming up. And I don't think it needs to be, you know, 
knocking any system necessarily. Although we ha we have to point out ways in which, mm -hmm. you know, Broadway has not seen uh, folks off stage and on stage. But I think it's a matter of like letting folks into our light. You know, um, yeah. how are we, how are we, you know, it's something that's really passionate that I'm really passionate about now is is how am I making connections with the schools in which that the, these incredible writers are coming out of. You know, what what system do they have once they get to New York and they put their suitcases down? Are they looking around and being like, okay, now, now where's where's Derek? Where's Leslie? Where's Michael? Mm -hmm. You know, where's where's Billy? Like, you know, how'd they do this? Um, one of my greatest memories was with that show with you, Leslie, when we did uh, Being Alive. And, and I remember talking to Chuck Cooper mm. and asking him, like, give, just give me some advice. You know, give me some, give me two pieces of advice. And he was like, one, you know, just save five dollars for every gig you do, never look back. And two, <laughs> really, really, you know, come on, old Chuck, fish and Chuck. Um, fish and Chuck. Fish and Chuck. <laughs> but two, he was like, you have to create for yourself. And that really landed on me as not just for myself, but for the next Joshua, yeah. you know, for the next the ones that are coming up and and so this time right now has been really intentional about creating for for the that's what billy yeah billy, billy gave me that too because we met billy in creation mode you know billy mm. was, billy was creating his own work whether anybody liked it whether anybody saw it he yep. was creating work for himself and for us and so i never forgot that and yeah you know that's what um you know i i, I ever since my sort of aha moment my epiphany moment you know a few years ago um, that I've talked about at length, but you know, when I really took charge of my creative engine, you know, and I stopped waiting for permission. You know, that's that's the, that's the other thing. It's like, what you're, it's a great question, Michael, but we we can we certainly can't wait for for permission right. or for anybody to create it. It's like, what are you doing today? What are, you know? What are you making today for yourself? You know, because we because we have things to say and we have to get it out. And so that's what the albums are about for me. Mm -hmm. That's what. The, Producing is about for me, you know, I'm doing that now and Nicolette's, you know, doing that alongside Nicolette too. It's, but you know, I, I love when I, when my phone rings and I get calls to be a part of wonderful things or emails to be part of wonderful things, but um, rest assured, I'm never sitting at home waiting for them ever. Hmm. <laughs> right. <clears throat> amen. Mm -hmm. Let the church say amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Derek, so you played Otis Williams, obviously, and you were, and, which earned you a Tony nomination. Um, the you know, Otis Williams, the last living member of the iconic group, The Temptations. Um, so this is a black leading man, obviously, in 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 the industry, in the, sort of the music industry, right? And here you are playing this man who also is uh, is is or you being a black leading man in your industry. What mm -hmm. was important for you in stepping into that role, knowing that whether you like it or not, <laughs> you would be a leader for not only the show, but the company? Give me the question one more time. <laughs> so what was, what, was, what, what was important for you in stepping into this role, yeah. knowing that whether you liked it or not, you would be leading, you would be the leader of the company yeah, yeah. As, as, for the show and also of the company. Uh, I, those are big shoes, I think. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, my goal was to kind of humanize an icon, right? So yeah. we have these men who are larger than life. We put them on these huge pedestals and we feel like we can't relate to them. Um, but I relate to him as a black man. I relate to him as a brother. I relate to him as a son. I relate to him for his love of family, his love of God. And I wanted to make sure that I respected the work that he put into his work, right? So I had mm -hmm. to honor uh, kind of his essence. I needed to um, honor the pride he had and has for what the Temptations, how the Temptations contributed to um, the music scene, how they contributed to the social justice scene. Um, and so for me, it was just an honor to kind of just display his heart and display his love for these men who kind of like, because of them, we're able to do what we did, you know? Mm. So I, I, there was just tremendous amount of love, pride I had just so much. For me, it was just such an honor because I've never actually played a real character before, a real person. Um, and 
to play there he is <laughs> <laughs> to play uh someone who meant so much to me his love of music his love of family like i relate so much to him just as a man that i just wanted to make sure that that came across right mm. i wanted to make sure that the self respect that he had that that came across um, the respect that he had from Barry Gordy, the respect that he had from his brothers, the respect that he had in the music business. Um, I wanted to make sure that he was respected. I wanted to make sure that the temptations were respected. Um, and for me, there was there was no pressure. There was just, I, I felt like the luckiest man. I felt like the absolute luckiest, just the luckiest man to be able to play this guy who meant so much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's oh, beautiful. Wow. Yeah, it is beautiful. Um, Josh, there was a great uh, interview in the LA Times that you and you talked about and you said it as a black man in the show I'm talking about uh, in Hamilton. Um, I'm excited for the little children of color that get to see me do this. Uh, and you you also explained that their parents often took them to meet you at the backstage door. Uh, and you said that they want their children to see what's possible. They want them to know that you matter a lot, no matter what anybody says, you can be important, you're valuable, you have something to contribute. And that is the biggest thing for me with this show. And so uh, you kind of touched on it on that little bit. So talk to me about why that was so important for you, especially, you know, getting to play Burr. Um, I, mean, I love that we, we, I mean, we have the original Burr right in, <laughs> right in our presence as well, which is amazing. And so you were able to sort of bring that, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in, in this country. So like in, in LA, when, it, in, for example, when you were doing it. So why was that, why was that important to you? You know, I, <clears throat> I remember right before I got first the Chicago company of Hamilton and then to do it on tour, um, I was doing Shuffle Along mm. um, with an all black cast. Um, and I'd have the pleasure of doing that with a, you know, in the Scottsford Boys before. So I, I was coming off an experience where there are a lot of black folks coming out and seeing, you know, I remember there were some experiences at the stage door, these little, you know, brown faces being like, oh, Oh, like, and I remember just taking pictures with, with who looked like my niece and my nephew, and um, going into Hamilton, realizing that uh, this was the first time that outside of New York, that was going to be possible in the biggest show that this generation has ever seen, was massive. And there were times when I, you know, you know, was on the eighth show of the week. And I was like, nah, Josh, you ain't, no, you're gonna stay right here. Mm -hmm. You got it, you got it. Maybe the voice isn't there, but you know what's gonna shine through you is a, is a message that this little child matters, that child knows what's possible, that little child, you know, even if they don't, they never come on stage before, they're gonna know that there was someone like them shining. And that's what, aside from the brilliance of Hamilton um, and the, the opportunity to play that role that Leslie so incredibly originated mm -hmm. was that in the back of my mind. Mm. It's like, I get to do that. You know, I get to, to shine for them. I'm going to yeah. pick up on that because I saw you on Shuffle Along. And when I saw you on Shuffle Along, you inspired me. I think I mm. told you this. I did tell you this. You might have forgot. But like, I told <laughs> you, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, just uh, the range that you have, right? So like the range of that character versus the um, the the Aaron Burr, right? And when I saw you in a character that I had never considered you to play, it inspired me to continue to stretch myself as well. I was like, let's not limit ourselves, Derek. Let's not do that. Um, and then I'm gonna speak on you too, Leslie, because that character, Burr, I was like, yeah, like I relate to that guy. And that character is rare, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. that to me was a golden apple. And I was like, this boy better eat this apple. <laughs> he better oh, eat he, it. He ate the whole fruit basket. He ate you it. Know what I'm saying? I, I was just so like- And the core. 
Yeah, but there were there were a few. <laughs> oh, um, there were a few characters uh, like that in that show, but your character specifically, um, it gave me uh, hope that there are other characters like that that will be created. Amen. Right? And, and I was like, thank you, God, yeah, that yeah, me this too. role exists. Me too, bro. Me too. It's like, of course, I didn't. I wasn't growing up thinking that I was going to play Aaron Burr, but that type of role. That's what. That's what these brothers, all of us, all four of us on here, like yeah. what we've been looking for is like, bro, that kind, that dimension, yeah. that humanity. Yeah that variety it was it was the first time you talk about you talk we started this thing talking about the box this motherfucker was out of the box excuse me we left the first on <laughs> it's fine it's fine all right, all right. Burr, burr was burr was out of the box he got you know he comes out on stage with that hip hop and then we get to the r&b and we get to the folk and we get to the jazz and we get to the broadway i mean like just all the colors you know so yeah it was it was um it was like, oh my God, with the apple. Now I, I felt the same way. I just wanted to, all I wanted, man, I, I knew what the opportunity was. And I was like, you know, um, you know, Paul started this thing showing that Dream Girls vid. You know, we we have examples. Of, yeah, we do. Of, of, of you know, when, when we've had our moment, like it really lived in it, you yeah. know, and you, all of us, we came up, Josh and I, we were looking at, we were looking at Michael McElroy like, you know, in, in <laughs> you know, Billy, Billy in Greece, which was like a whole other thing with him, but Billy and and Dream Girls and Ben Vereen, and you know, so like, you know, for us to get this opportunity now to um, even even to show them, like, look what you taught us. Look yeah. What you taught us. You know yeah. Like, yeah. did I do good? Yeah. <laughs> you know, to yeah. give them. You know, Cheryl Lee, like, like Cheryl was texting me a couple weeks ago when the movie came out with some compliments. Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't even do it. I learned it all from you. <laughs> you know, to come this way with a compliment because I learned it all from you. So yes. <laughs> well, I think it just says it is possible, right? And we are, you're, you're, we, you know, the three of you are, have have had, you know, roles, and I mean, now the four of us actually have roles that we're lucky to be able to have played major roles where it is possible. And so yeah. it's like this thing where you start to, you know, in the industry of Broadway, and especially this idea, uh, the thing is, is that because there's only, there's only certain, there's only like a couple of those roles that have sort of been like spotlighted throughout the history of Broadway. Uh, it's incredible the magnitude when they, when those roles do come around and the impact it brings to all the ones around us, before us, behind us and all the things. So it just says it is possible. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that that is important. But also like I, what I loved about these characters that we're talking about now is like they have weight. You know what I mean? Like when I watch something, I want to see how how heavy is it. You know what I mean? And and when someone can carry that weight, because I like I when I got the opportunity to do it, I'm like I get to carry something now, I can hold something, and it and that that uh, it gave me a challenge, right? Because I knew I was up for the challenge, and I feel like for black men, like uh, the the opportunity to carry, right? Is like it's just a little bit less, right? But when we get these opportunities to carry something. Um, for me, there's this like, it, it is an example for people who are behind me, you know, and it is, and it is a thank you for people who are ahead of me. Like, and so I just love that these characters that we get to portray, like they have weight to them. I hope you brothers get more and more opportunities. All of y'all. I'm a fan. I'm mm. a fan of all of y'all. I hope y'all continue to get opportunities to dazzle us and inspire us. Same, 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 same. Exactly. Same. So, and so now kind of, piggybacking off of this idea behind you, you know, like the, for those behind you, um, uh, the, the, Leslie, there was a, you know, uh, uh, com well, first congrats on the Hamilton, the, on the movie. Yes, yes, yes. It's amazing. So amazing. awesome. So exciting. Um, there was, the, there was, I read this interview that you recently did about just sort of like negotiating a deal for, rightfully basically what you deserved in comparison to another white actor uh, who had been basically gotten the, something, the, the, basically what they were getting for something similar with what you were doing. And I think by you doing that, you know, you were laying down foundation for so many of people after you. And uh, I, 
I mean, I know that you have this fire in you, but I mean, I think people who do, who know you know that that is just like, it's like the Leslie Odom fire, you know, we just know that. But for those who don't, like, I'm, I, 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 I want to know where that fire comes from and, and, uh, and why that was really important for you. Because, you know, as you even said in there, like, sometimes they say, okay, you know, and then you, you know, they move on, and you have to be okay with that. But you stood, you stood your ground. And, and, but also, it wasn't even about you standing your ground, it was just standing for what was right, <laughs> truly. <laughs> so I'm curious about with that, because that is something as we all know, um, the like bottom line of it all is very different for um, what it has been different in the past for black actors, as opposed to, yes. you know, actors of color and people who are not of color. Yes. Well, you know, um, do what you have to do to, to put and keep the courage in your heart. You know, I, um, I know there were these, I won't even, I won't even, uh, uh, <laughs> I gotta be super careful. I want to thread the <laughs> needle, but, um, there were these, you know, I gotta say it because you know, because I want to tell my a friend of mine says the truth without love is brutality. So I'm never trying to be brutal, right? Mm. I love, I love everybody. I, I want to create a, I want to be a part of loving spaces and I want to tell each other the truth and love. I had there was a there was um a white liberal, very white, very liberal couple, you know, that I knew. Josh knows them as well. They 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 fancy themselves producers. And at one point you know, I did something that displeased them. Um, they wanted me to do something. I didn't want to do it. I respectfully said, I don't, I don't want to do that. And they, and the emails were flying about how there was no more love. And, you know, you know, they, they were done with me in a, in a moment. And I had to school them just a little bit in love. I am not, um, a lost puppy that you found at the pound. Um, I have been loved my entire life. I had two black parents that loved me. I had grandparents that loved me. Um, no one that I've ever loved in my life has ever been done with me because I've done something to displease them. That's not the way love works, you hmm. know? And so I had, to, I just had to break that down. I, I'll just say like, I, you know, I, I respect myself. I was I, I used to go to the Freedom Theater when I was when I was a little kid. Miss Tom Page, he passed away about two years ago. The password to get into Freedom Theater, he would say, "What's the password?" We would say, "I respect myself." Tom Page would say, "You're beautiful." Oh, that was the password. Well, all right. I respect Ooh. myself. Mm -hmm. That is not you know, and so with, I want my other brothers to talk too. But at the end of the day, that's what any negotiation is about. It is about. You can say a number, I can say a number that I can live with, the number that I'm gonna be able to sleep at night accepting. This is what negotiations are. At any point, that person can say, we're not paying it and you have to be able, you have to be willing to go. That's all right. Yep. It's okay. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and vice versa, that they, you can say, you know what, that's not enough, that's not good enough for me. I respect myself, whatever this is gonna cost me, the time or the energy, whatever it is, you come with those numbers and you know, you do the thing that's going to allow you to sleep at night. Yes. Mm. I love mm. that you start with respect, though, um, Leslie. Yes. I think we've been trained to just start off with um, anything left. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> what we've been trained to sort of yeah. not rock the boat. But when you start with respect, you understand the value that you place on yourself first mm. and on your art. Yeah. Right. And that's what you're getting. And then you let someone live with, you You have to live with the consequences. For, for me, there was a couple of these shows back here where I had to just walk away, you know? And at times when I didn't finish paying my student loans, mm -hmm. you know, at times when I was like, you know, it was, but I had a feeling and I, I think that feeling comes from a place of thankfully, like my parents, you know, grew me up with a, an idea that of, of who I am, whose I am in God and that, you know, there is a place for me, mm -hmm. you know, and that means there must be a place for me in art somewhere mm -hmm. and I will find it. Yeah. And if you producer and if you director don't have a clear vision for that right now and on our visions don't meld on what that is, that's okay. It's okay. You know, thank you. And that's okay. We'll keep yeah. it moving. Yes. But this one experience 
is not going to define my whole life or my whole career. No. Hmm. Because you got to realize like you have to live with your decision after the contract is signed. Right. So if you if you sign that contract and you know you haven't respected yourself, if you know you haven't valued yourself, you now have to do that show eight times a week feeling the way you do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to ask yourself, what does that cost me? And so there's an I I don't think there's anything that's worth your self-worth. And so Mm -hmm. if someone doesn't want to value you, if you do not feel valued, you I believe you have to walk away. Because the, the the alternative to that is being in a year contract, mm. mad, <laughs> <laughs> right? Being in a year contract with an attitude. And so now your energy is now affecting everyone else's energy because you're bringing that dark. Bro, I love what you just said. And can I say you, do, like, it's so important because can I, can I, I want to say oh, this. Love. Yes, come on in. Four years later, four years later, when the Hamilton movie is coming out, in the height of the Black Lives Matter movement. Hello. We can come together and promote this movie in love. Mm -hmm. We don't have no hard feelings now because we said what we needed to say then. Yes. We did what we needed to do then. And so so it's all love now. I'm not coming now and my heart is broke because I ain't say something to you back then. I said it all. You said it from Joe. You said it from the top. Yes. You said a standard. You, but yeah. you have to, and it's hard. I feel like, especially young actors, it's hard for us, uh, not us, it's hard for young actors to- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say well. <laughs> I had to correct that. It's, it's hard for you to see your work, right? Because you think there's like so many people up for this one particular role, right? But that doesn't mean it, it, it lessens your value because there's 30 people up for the role. You still have to go in there with your respect and what you, you have to go in there with your value. And I think sometimes people are just scared to stand up for themselves and scared to ask for what they want because it's like, well, then someone else will just, we'll do it for some, we'll, someone else will do it for much less and for, for less whatever. And brother, and, and the thing and is, okay. <laughs> and the thing is, if you're doing it in your work, you're doing it in your life. Yes. If you're doing it, if you're doing it in your contract negotiations, you're yes. doing it in your life. Wow. You respect yourself. Yes, you speak up for yourself in your relationships. If somebody did, you speak up for yourself, you That's do it everywhere, and then and then yeah. now you find you're able to do it everywhere. Yeah, but it's that first step. It's that first boundary that you're trying to set, even if it's in your whatever relationship, your friendship, your romantic relationships, your business relationships. Setting those boundaries of this is acceptable. Actually, nah, I don't like the way that makes me feel. <laughs> you have to set those boundaries, and if that we're means- scared. We're scared. We're scared. We're, scared. We're, we're scared to get burned. Yes. You know? mm. and, and and but but the thing about taking a stand for yourself and who you know you are and what your what your work says in front of you. Um, you know, when Leslie did what he did, you know, it emboldened so many people, you know, to just be like, you know what? Actually, I know what I bring to the but I know what I bring to a relationship. Mm-hmm. And, I, and and here's the thing, like, there's no hard feelings. It's not going up into anyone's face and saying, how could you not see who I am? Yeah. Right. When yeah. you know who you are yep. and when you're secure in that, and that takes yeah. work and that takes time yes. and maybe not right out of school. It, it, it's not easy to just come out. But when you start to take, when you say that confidently, you understand, ah, oh, we won't post me again anyway. It, yes. You know, this ain't the moment for us right now. This ain't. Right? <laughs> yeah. And that's <laughs> okay. And that's okay because I know there's a place for me. Yeah. Okay, that's right. That's that's just yeah. Well, it seems like you all. I mean, I mean, you all basically just answered my sort of last thing in terms of of advice for upcoming, you know, young young artists. Um, and really people of color too, obviously people of color coming up in, in this industry, but there is this theme of also this unapologetically you, right? Like this, yeah. like, like that thing of like you, like I, we did a panel a couple of weeks ago with Danielle Brooks and she was like, I'm just working on being unapologetically black. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, and, and it being okay and it being the thing and like and basically like not really not 
worrying about that idea of what we all put in in our heads of the stereotype of you know that we're not worth certain things because yeah. we whether we we may believe it uh, but you know well we do believe it but we're told from the industry different uh and so i i'm this is exactly what you all are saying is 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 this is this idea of that you know, authentic authenticity and really, really understanding as you will work on yourself and you get as you're going through it to know what your worth is and mm -hmm. your unapologetically beautiful self and all the things that you bring to it is it. And if you don't want it, then I'm then we have to just move on, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's and it is what it Can is. Can I say quickly, Michael, I think what's super interesting is how do we actually work on that? Like, that's what I would want to know coming out of school. Like, what are the things that I can do? And can that be a part of training too? I think, and of course, it's more than the acting, singing, and dancing. It's, it's really, who am I? You know, what do I value about myself? You know, where do I? It's those deeper questions that if we're not really answering those questions, then we get into, we're just kind of like a tornado in this business. We're just like, okay, whatever. Sure, 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 sure. I don't know. I don't know if we're not asking ourselves, if we're not affirming ourselves mm -hmm. in the morning, you know, and after an audition and in the waiting room, you know, and, and, and each other. And that's why, and that's why like, you know, like you got to do this here work, that intrinsic value, bro, that intrinsic value, you know, with no Tony nomination, with no Grammy award, with no Tony award, with, with none of that stuff. None of that. You know what I mean? That you are, that you are worthy of, of respect and dignity yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. You so because because let me tell you something. Them young people like it. It starts now. Mm -hmm. the, you know what I mean? Like the, those the, the ways you stand up for yourself right now. That is what you're gonna build the whole thing on. Mm. The hard conversations that you're willing to have at 21. That yeah. scary. You know that David and Goliath stuff. The scary stuff. You know when when yeah. somebody and it it ain't about a read. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's about, <laughs> it's about can I hit you privately when some when you know some director can I talk to you for ten minutes after the rehearsal? I would just love ten minutes, or whenever you can I come ten minutes early tomorrow, and you and you and you lay out your heart. You know when you said this thing, it really hurt me, and here's why: being vulnerable, being being you know because there's strength in that. Oh, in absolutely. You, all I'm saying is like it's about like. For the young people, it is like yes, the because because what you're gonna your value is gonna be your record. It's it's or um, at some point it's gonna be like I, I, I did this here. I, I'm consistent. I've done this thing over and over again, and so that's that's how your rate goes up and your quote. But at first, it's just like I am worthy of taking up a little bit of space. I'm worthy of the air I'm breathing in the room, and so you have to pronounce my name right. Hmm. You have to. You know, you can't um, um, abuse me verbally or physically, you know, just like those. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Well, I think it's also there is a I tell young, young people, I've done, you know, in, the, in any of the classes I've taught or whatever, like Q&A is always say, like, just like starting small. And I'm, I'm like, give yourself a little a little challenge and start it small by going, I don't know, going to Target, right? And going from the time you leave your house to the time you come back in your head, think not apologizing for who you are. And that mm -hmm. sort of like this idea, just to, just to start there, you know, like whether it's, maybe it's walking the dog, that you just have this thought while you're walking you're around your block, that you're just not apologizing for who you are yeah. and huh. let it grow, you know, yeah. and like, let it grow. And see what happens. And see what happens. And and I always say, really, see what happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so so boys, so the final question for you all is, what do you hope for the future of Broadway through this racial awakening? That is that is that is that is happening. It's amazing, I that we are having a, a, a racial awakening in our Broadway community. I mean, obviously in our country, good lord. Um, but it also has it has trickled down, and 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 then we are we are in it. I mean, Broadway is shut down. I feel like we will be a, you know, when we come back. It will be a very different, uh, you know, Broadway. Um, it will. 
So what is that? What is your hope for the future of Broadway through this racial awakening? I, I really hope that, <clears throat> I hope that there is more, and I know this has been said many times, but there's more diversity off stage to really embolden those storytellers <clears throat> who are gonna tell BIPOC stories. And, and I'll just say, you know, as a member of the black community that I hope that we begin to build for ourselves to let people into our light and not try to prove to anyone else that I, that, you know, we have to call things, call things out the way we need to call them out. But I think mm -hmm. at the end of this whole thing, what is left, what structures, um, what pipelines from school to stage and backstage have we built to ensure that there is truly a more diverse Broadway? Um, so I hope that we let people into our light, into our brilliance, and don't shun, you know, at a time when I feel like we need to build more than anything. So hmm. hopefully come 2021, we will be more cognizant of that. I felt also, uh, I want a, 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 a stronger support system for each other. I feel mm -hmm. like we, I'll, say, I'll speak for myself. Sometimes we, you feel like you're the only one going through something, right? And mm -hmm. so throughout this entire pandemic, when these voices are starting to come out, you realize that there's a lot of people who feel the same way you do. And I, I want us, uh, especially people of color, to just embrace each other a little bit more to support each other a little bit more um, without maybe someone having to ask for the support. Mm -hmm. I wanna make sure that I am my brother's keeper. I wanna make sure that the next black guy who it's his first time leading on Broadway, that I find him, that he doesn't have to come look for me. Hmm. That I come and I tell him, listen, this is what you're about to face. This is what is gonna be required of you. This is how you're actually gonna feel. So I feel that as we continue to develop uh, you know, uh, as we move forward in this business, I hope that we as people of color will embrace each other more without people having to ask for the support. I want the support to just be there. And mm. so I think, that, I think that just requires all of us to just be more proactive and reaching out. Hmm. Wow. Well, hmm. I, think the, um, I think the only thing that's required of us when this is all said and done is to... Um, emerge different, you know, it's emer emerge rearranged. Um, mm. I feel, um, I feel it in my relationships, um, brother to brother, you know, look, we've, ne we've never had, we've never created this space like this, like you've created, Michael, for us to have this conversation until this moment, right? <laughs> look, look, this the safe space that you've created for us to have this kind of exchange. Um, I feel it in my relationships with my white brothers and sisters too. You know, there's a vulnerability and an openness that has never been there before. I just want that space to stay. I want that space to stay. I want us to be able to keep telling each other the truth in love, to keep holding one another accountable in love. You know, here's, here's, here's what I see. Here's what I'm seeing. Do I have this wrong? Educate me. Hit me up. Like, what, what's up? What, 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 what is this from your perspective? And I'm going to share with you mine. You know, let's just, let's, let's keep doing the work. And I mean, like at the, at the very least, what we can do is just to keep the communication flowing. Honest, honest dialogue. Yeah. 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 I love that. There's, you all are, one, but a few weeks ago, we had one of the other panel and one of the, um, Tracy Beezer actually said um, about having grace for growth. And uh, it was a it was a beautiful it's it has stuck with me for so for um, and so there's a just a beauty in it, of hearing what you all are saying. I am so uh, thankful um, that you gentlemen were just so open, uh, but with love and light and uh, truth. And I am uh, I know that 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 not only myself but there are a lot of others who are going to hear our conversation and uh, and get to learn some things that they maybe didn't know or through, you know, some of their favorite leading men on Broadway. So I am thankful for your hearts um, for, for 
coming on and chatting and and discussing and opening up um, to a, to an audience like Broadway.com that has not gotten to hear this conversation. So thank y'all today. Thank y'all so much. Um, it's so nice to see your faces. Uh, yeah, it's good to see y'all. <laughs> so crazy. Thank you, Michael. I love y'all. I love you, brothers. Love y'all. Love y'all. Oh, Josh, I think you're also doing, you've been having some talks on your Instagram um, yeah. I believe, as well. So check out that. Um, I, I know, but, and, and all, I mean, these boys are always talking. I mean, if there's a, you check, there's interviews, there's all <laughs> kinds of stuff about them. So just, just, just do a quick Google and a, a bunch of stuff will come up <laughs> to learn more about what they, what they have to say. But thank y'all so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank y'all so much. Love love you guys. Guys. Take care. <laughs> OMG. Well, there you have it. That is that was today's panel. I mean, it was amazing to have. Thank you, Derek Baskin. Thank you, Joshua Henry. Thank you, Leslie Olam Jr. for sharing your hearts. I hope that you all um, got to uh, learn something and 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 hear uh, something and that that was new and maybe different and and um, just in a, in a new light for you. So appreciative of it. Miss Caitlin, where you at? You coming in here? <laughs> I, I mean, every, Come on. I don't know why I'm surprised anymore on Tuesdays when I just, I, you know, you want to know what my favorite thing is. I know I'll shut up because I like, I shouldn't be the one talking. But you want to know what my favorite <laughs> thing is about these panels is seeing, we haven't had one yet where they are not constantly hyping each other up. Yes, you know, right? Right. There's this like energy. I uh, totally, I know. It's amazing to see that. And like, you see their, yeah. to see it like go off in their heads and they're mm -hmm. like, yes. And yes. And, you yep. know, and that's, that is, um, oh gosh, it's so wonderful. To it's be able to have I always cry. I'm like, I'm always like, hmm, what's going to make me cry this Tuesday? <laughs> Just them being so like lovely to each other and you being the best ever. So thank you. I'll, I'll wait. Of the course. Best. Thank you. It's lovely to see you and um, I will see you soon. I will see Mwah. you soon. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in for such another another wonderful, incredible Tuesday Roundtable hosted by Michael James Scott. You can listen to this discussion that just happened anywhere you get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Now, y'all, we all saw the incredible uh, footage that Mr. Paul Wontorek dug up for us. And so guess what? Taking us out today, I have to read this because I do not need... I don't want to get this wrong. Taking us out today is original Dream Girl stars Cheryl Re Lee Ralph, Loretta Devine, and Deborah Burrell on the Jerry Lewis MDA telethon. And they are singing the show's title song. So you're welcome in advance, and we'll see you tomorrow. Street.